Hello, good evening. Good evening. How good are evening, you? teacher. Fine, you too. Very well. Ready for the English class. Okay, we're going to wait just one more minute so we can uh, have more students with us. Okay. Hello, good evening. Good evening, teacher. Welcome to the English class. Okay, teacher. Thanks. Eh, ¿Pudo hacer los ejercicios? ¿Le salieron bien? Um, ya, no, ya no probé, teacher, pero o luego, de, luego lo haré. Okay, perfecto. A ver qué tal. Gracias. ¿Qué cosa okay. me escribe? Teacher, bueno. yo estuve... Teacher. Yo estuve probando el mismo que consultaba Carlos ayer uh -huh. y, y probé de las dos formas. Eh, donde decía, he went to San Francisco con punto uh -huh. y no me lo aceptó. O solo ponerle San Francisco punto y tampoco me lo aceptó. No sé cuál será el problema. Porque sí probé de las dos maneras que usted mostró. Ok. ¿Y lo está haciendo en un sitio web o en la plataforma? Eh, en la plataforma en la plataforma sería en me refiero en la aplicación ah no no en, en, en la web, okay. en la web. Mm -hmm. a ver y cuál era el 2.11 era a ver. no 2.11 me parece si no me mal no 13, recuerdo 13 2.13 13 yeah. ok yes. que era el listening verdad sí yes. okay. Vaya, fíjese que estas son las que yo tengo. Sería el primero, ¿verdad? Where did Jason go? Yes. De acuerdo a listening. Mm -hmm. Sí, sí. Entonces, sí, sí, según lo que yo tengo acá, sería San Francisco o he went to San Francisco. Y puede probar ya sea con el punto o sin el punto. Eh, is... Oh, teacher. Ajá. Uh, you said he went to San Francisco. Francisco. Mm, puede ser también un error, déjenme ver. <laughs> Todo puede suceder, la verdad. Veamos si pongo San Francisco. Vaya sin el punto, vamos a ver. No, eh, Cisco. 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 San yeah, Francisco. Right. Cisco. Yeah. Let's see. Ahí me lo agarras sin el punto. Uh, no, pero entonces... Ah, sí, ¿Punto? sí, San Francisco. Ajá. Uh -huh. San Francisco okay, sin el voy punto. A, lo... Voy a probar sin el punto. Ajá. Uh -huh. Porque es posible que eso okay, sea. Voy a... Sí, porque yo creo que le puse punto. Ok, Igual. puede ser. Porque sí, a veces son detallitos bien chiquitos, más que todo cuando estamos ingresando algo a una cajita de estas, es que nos puede dar una situación como esa. A veces la respuesta es correcta, pues... Eh, pero es, es una cuestión sí. nada más de, de espacios, de punto, comas, e, X cosas puede ser. 
Entonces, eh, okay. si quiere lo, lo trata de hacer, igual mañana, pues, eh, si, si le da problemas, me avisan, porque ya mañana tendríamos que estar haciendo el midterm test. Entonces, para los que no lo han hecho, okay. eh, tratemos de, de avanzar y de ponernos al día, porque si no, al final, eh, ya las otras dos semanas van a tener que ir corriendo. Y recordemos también de que el, el, um, el último día, pues, el día del examen final, pues, se cierra todo y después ya no se puede hacer. Okay. Okay. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. También estábamos, uh, bueno, creo que ya todos recibieron el correo o la información para poder inscribirse al próximo curso, ¿verdad? Yes, teacher. Así es. Eso sería más tardar el 10 de febrero. Ahora, yo les recomiendo que lo hagan antes, ¿verdad? Por si hay algún cambio que necesiten o necesiten enviar otra cosa. Recordemos también de que hay que volver a enviar eh, la fotografía del Dubil Need y pues el formulario lleno, firmado, todo pues como ustedes ya tienen experiencia, ¿verdad? Pero eh, sí, yo les recomendaría que lo hicieran antes del 10 pues, para no estar ahí el último día pensando, ah, ¿será que lo aceptaron o no, no lo envió? Muchas cosas pueden suceder, ¿verdad? Y se espera iniciar el 22, o sea, terminamos este y se espera iniciar el siguiente, el siguiente lunes. Entonces, esperemos que todo vaya bien y que pues todos nos veamos por allá, ¿verdad? Bueno, no sé si voy a estar con ustedes, pero si no, pues que sigan adelante, que es lo importante, ¿ok? Ok, Ok. Very well. ¿Alguna otra consulta o duda con la plataforma? ¿Alguien más? ¿Algún comentario? ¿Alguna situación? No, verdad. Todo cool. Nice. So, everybody, welcome to the English class, to the ones that are coming into the uh, conference. We are going to continue with the class. Uh, what do you remember from uh, yesterday's class? Use verb be in... Pass be. Pass. Yeah. The simple pass of B, right? Uh, how yeah. is it going to be the simple pass of B? Using where, where, was, where, where, was, 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 very good. It's very easy. Um, yesterday, I remember that we were practicing and there was no problem at all. So I hope this is going to be um, very good from, uh, from now on. So today we're going to start with a different topic. We're going to check right away. So we're going to start talking about, well, first of all, some vocabulary. And this one is called the City Pictionary. I know that you have some vocabulary already, but we're going to check this one, okay? Uh, let's see. There are not many, but we're going to repeat. So everybody, please repeat. School. 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 Telephone box. Telephone, Telephone box. box. Crossroads. Crossroads. Car park. Car, car, car park. park. Roundabout. 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 Museum. 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 Bus stop. Bus stop. Bus stop. Street lights. Street lights. Street lights. Factory. 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 Garage. 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 Hotel. 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 Traffic light. Traffic, Traffic light. light. Pedestrian crossing. Pedestrian, Pedestrian crossing. crossing. Park. 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 Bank. 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 Hospital. 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 Railway station. Railway, Railway station. station. Railway station. Airport. 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 Stadium. 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 House. 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 Okay, so um, do you have any question about this lady vocabulary? Uh, crossroads. Mm. It's very clear, right? Crossroads. Uh, car park or parking lot. Sí. Eh, ¿Puede darle para arriba, por favor? Ok. Eh, 
Y roundabout es como rotonda, como, como rondel. Mm, sería como un um, retorno. El otro okay. sería un uh, traffic circle. Traffic circle, ok. Ok. Thank you. You're welcome. Ok, so we have street lights that is not the same as uh, traffic lights. Tell garage, factory. Do you know what is a factory? Industrial. Fabrica. 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 Good. Fabrica. Pedestrian crossing. So pedestrian is a uh, is the name of people that are walking on the street, right? So those are pedestrians. Uh, power bank. Let me check if there is. Any. What is pedestrians? Pedestrians are uh, when you are walking in uh, when you are on the street and you are walking, you are a pedestrian. Okay. Okay. Como peatón sería. Exactly. That is it. And then we have railway station. Oh, and, well, we have other vocabulary here. This is with a little concept. Uh, I liked it, this one because this is a way that, in mind that I ask you, what is a hospital? So you can come and tell me, a hospital is a place where you go when you are sick. So that uh, should be the way that you can explain about places. So, and uh, also this is a good one because you can see that there are two names. For example, in the first one it says car park and in the second one it says parking lot. So in England, Australia, we're going to say car park. And in the US, we're going to say parking lot. Okay, so we have a different name sometimes. Um, for example, for apartment, in England we say the flat, okay? Probably for us it's more common to speak uh, American English because that is where almost everybody goes from here, from El Salvador, right? Uh, but it's good for us to check that there are many ways sometimes to call things depending on where you are. So, for this one we're going to read. Uh, let's see. Um, Omar, could you please help me reading the first one? Uh, car park? Yep. Car park. A place where you can leave your car for a period of time. So that is it, a parking lot or a car park. A place where you can leave your car for a period of time. Of course, you have to pay, right? Because it's like a business. Um, Carlos, could you please read the next? Okay, teacher. Pet shop, pet store. A place where you can buy pets and, and pet supply shop. As pet food. Okay, that is a pet shop or a pet store, a place where you can buy pets and pet supplies, such as pet food or uh, any other thing that you may want for your pet. Uh, do you know what is such as? Um. Any idea? Okay, such as is like when we say in Spanish, tales como, tal como. Okay, so you can use that one for that. Um, what is a pet? Mascota. Mascotas. Very good. It's an animal that you love and you have at home, right? Uh, let's see what else. Supplies. What can be a supply? Mm -hmm. Compra. Mm, no, it's not that one exactly. Como accesorios. Something like that. Supplies are things that you need for doing something. So, supplies. You can buy car supplies in a car store. You can buy uh, home supplies in a supermarket. So, different things, right? Such as pet food in this case. Good. Well, the next is going to be for Brenda Cruz. Pharmacy drugstore, a place where you can buy medicine and other health items. Okay, so this is a pharmacy in England or a drugstore in the U.S. And this is a place where you can buy medicine and other health items. Do you know what is an item? Like a thing. Like things in general, right? In this case, health 
items is because it's not only medicine, right? You can buy alcohol, you can buy cream, ointment, you can buy uh, many things there. So, um, items is a, a word that comes from uh, English. We sometimes use that in Spanish, como items, uh, but it's, it, it comes from English uses. That is going to be different things. Um, that can be many, and we don't know exactly how, uh, how to classify. So we have items in general. Okay, the other one uh, is going to be for, let's see, Francisco. Hello, Francisco, are you there? I guess not. Okay, so we're going to um, help. We're going to need the help of Gerardo. Let's see. Playground, an outdoor area where children can play on swing, a slide, or other equipment. Very good. Playground. So playground is an, an outdoor area where children can play on swings, a slide, or other equipment. So this is like when you go to the park and there are some places for you to to have your children uh, and there are kids playing there. Or when you go, for example, to some fast food restaurants, right? And there are some kids playing there in the in that place. So playground is a place where children can play. And outdoor, what is, uh, do you know what is outdoor? Exteriores, afuera. Very good, outdoor. And the opposite of outdoor, what might be? Indoor. Indoor, that is correct. So I mind that we're going to do exercise and you can ask me, are we going to exercise indoor or outdoor? So that is like inside of something or outside. Um, so it says outdoor area where children can play on swings. Swings are the, the things where you sit and you balance yourself, right? Those are swings. Do you, do you understand that? Not much? Okay, I will say that in Spanish. Swings sería como columpios. Okay. A slide que sería como un, un tobogán donde se desliza, ¿verdad? Slide. Mm -hmm. En este caso, recordemos que las palabras también significan otra cosa. Por ejemplo, swing como verbo es moverse, ¿verdad? Slide como verbo es deslizar. And then it says, or other equipment. So, it might be many other things. So that is a playground. Teacher. Yep. Um, um, Francisco chat message. Ah, okay. Let me see. Mm, I can see it here. He, he has some problems or something? I have a problem on internet connection. Okay. Okay. Ya, ya regresé, pero sí me está dando problema el internet, teacher. Okay. No hay problema. Si le da problema, pues entra, vuelve a salir y pues estamos para... Para ver okay. ahí cómo le damos. So the next one is going to be Thank for you. Jenny. Okay. Police station, the place where police office work, you are taking her if you are arrested. That is it. The police station is the place where police officers work. You are taking her if you are arrested. Okay. I guess this is clear, but um, is there any question in any word? Are they in the police station? Como el tra oficina de trabajo de la policía. Es una estación de policía de que policía. Don donde dice que uh, we're police officers. So a police officer mm -hmm. is the person. They work there, right? And you are taken there if you are arrested. So please don't get arrested. No. <laughs> yeah. Very good. The next one is uh, for floor. 
post office, a place where people can buy stamps and mail letters or parcels. Very good. So the post office is a place where people can buy stamps and mail uh, letters or parcels. So I guess this is uh, very clear. Stamps are like little things that you put in the letters. So you pay for that one and uh, you send the letters. And the parcels are like packages that you send. That is it. Questions about post office? No question, teacher. Okay. The next one, Christian is going to be for Brian. Mm -hmm. Prison, a building where people are seen as punishment for a crime they co commit. Committed. Committed. Very good. So prison is a building where people are sent as punishment for a crime they committed. I guess this is kind of clear, but let's check some words. Building. What is a building? Construction. Edificio. Edificio. Edificio, good. So it's a building where people are sent. Uh, sent is the past of send, do you remember? As punishment, what is punishment? Castigo. Castigo, good. For a crime they committed. Um, commit. Uh, yeah, very good. Cometido. That is, and that is password, committed. Uh, another word for punishment is ground, grounded. The difference is that punishment is very severe. Grounded is, for example, when you did something as a kid and your mom told you, go to your room. So that is to be grounded, okay? Any question about prison? No. Okay, the next one that is restaurant is going to be for Daphne. Restaurant, a place where meals are prepared and served to customers. Very good. So a restaurant is a place where meals are prepared and served to customers. What is meals? Alimentos. Comidas. Comidas. Very good. So there, meals are prepared and served to customers. What is customers? Clientes. Clientes. Perfect. Good. Clientes. So school is going to be for Jonathan. School, a place where teachers help children learn. Very good. School is a place where teachers help children learn. I guess this is very clear. So shopping mall is going to be for Iris. Shopping malls, a large building that has many stores and usually a food court too. Very good. Shopping mall is a large building that has many stores and usually a food court too. So in this case, uh, it's very important to say large building. It's not just a building, right? Uh, in the U.S. or in other countries, well, some shopping malls, there are a lot. You can spend the day there. Here, there are some big uh, shopping malls as well, right? And uh, stores, what are stores? Tienda. Very good. And of course, you know what is a food court, right? Uh, inside of the shopping mall where you go and buy and eat food. So that is the food court. Okay, stadium is going to be for, let me check, Beatriz. Stadium, a place where sports are played. You watch your favorite team play here. Very good. Stadium is a place where sports are played. You watch your favorite team play here. So, stadiums are for many kinds of sports. Any questions about uh, stadium? No question, teacher. Good. The other one, it could be underground station or subway station. That is going to be for uh, Cody. 
Hi, teacher. Hello. ¿Cuál me tocó? Underground station or subway station. Underground station, subway station. A place where the subway train stops for the passengers. That is it. So, uh, a place where the subway uh, train stops for passengers. So, you can go out or get out and get in of the subway. I guess that's very clear as well. Aquí no hay. No, we don't have. It would be a very good idea, right? To have yes. some like that. Well, maybe one day. Um, supermarket. That is going to be for uh, Marcela. Supermarket, a self-service store where people buy groceries such as food or household products. That is a supermarket. Thank you. A self-service store where people buy groceries such as food or household products. Um, what is self-service? Auto servicio. That is it. So when you go to the supermarket, you just walk through the aisles and then you take what you need and that's it, right? So you do it yourself. Uh, then it says groceries. What are groceries? Comestible. Something like that, like grains, uh, fruits, vegetables, things like that. And then household products. What is that? Cosas para la casa. Productos de la casa, like something for you to clean the floor or um, toilet paper, things like that, right? Um, this comes also with another that is household chores. Do you have an idea what is household chores? No. Okay, household chores son como quehaceres del hogar. So when you have to do the laundry, clean the house, mow the lawn, things like that. So that is, is together with this one. The last one. Uh, any questions here? Okay. So zoo is going to be for, let's see, um, Daphne. So, a place where you can see animals and birds from around the world. That is a zoo. A place where you can see animals and birds from around the world. Remember the pronunciation is world with L. And the other one is word, right? Tell me the word. And the other one, this one is world. Okay. So, um, I guess this is clear. Uh, do you have any question about this? Could you see that? Well, for first of all, please be careful about the words that start with S. Con las palabras que tengan S al principio, recordamos que no le hay que ponerle una E. En este caso, por ejemplo, station. No tenemos que decir a station, right? Esa E no va. So please be care careful about that one. Station, uh, store, also es el sonido es store, okay? A stadium. So be careful on that one. And also, this is very interesting because uh, it tells you how you can describe places. So, for example, uh, if I tell you what is what is downtown, do you know what is downtown? The center of the city. In English. El centro de la ciudad no es. In English. Sorry. Okay, because here, as you can see there in the examples, we say police station. Ah, oh, the police station is the place where police officers work. So if I ask you in English, what is downtown? What would you tell me? Downtown. 
con sus propias palabras, pero en inglés, ¿cómo lo diría? ¿Cómo le explicaría ahí a un gringuito que anda perdido y le dice, mire, yo voy para el downtown y, y dónde es que es eso, verdad? What would you say? Cerca del Chinatown. I'm sorry, could you please repeat? Con sus propias palabras, ¿cómo sería? Downtown. No importa si se equivoca, no estamos para aprender. Podemos Entonces, decir como si toman un bus o algo así para llegar al centro de la ciudad. Quizás eso sería un poquito más complejo. Y si yo solo quiero saber qué es downtown y usted me lo quiere explicar en inglés, how will you say? Con sus propias palabras y aunque se equivoque, pues aquí todos nos podemos equivocar. Yo meto la pata también. The central of the city. The center of the city. Yeah. Downtown is the center of the city. There are many people there. You can say that. Okay. What else we can say? Um, if I say, what is Metro Centro? It's a mall. It's a mall. Okay. Very good. That is it. Uh, it's in downtown. It's, it's in downtown? Uh, I, I'm not sure. No. If it's, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a little bit far away, right? No. Do you know? Do you know what is uh, the countryside? La ciudad de lado. No. Las afueras de la ciudad. That is it. Countryside is the opposite of the city. So, for example, if I say I live in the countryside, what I'm saying is that I live outside the city. Okay. Uh, what else can I ask you? Let me think. Mm. Well, so this is like a way for you to describe places. Do you have any question about this? No questions. Okay, so let's move on. So we have here a little bit more of grammar. Some and any. Okay. Uh, okay. Some. Some is generally used in positive, affirmative sentences. Uh, so we can say there are some flowers in a vase on the table. Or we can say he needs some medicine. Remember that you can use some with countable and non-countable. Not a problem. Okay. But if you use countable, we're going to use the noun in plural. For example, there are, that is important, the verb to be, there are some flowers in a vase on the table. So those are plural, both the verb and the noun. And the other one says he needs some medicine. Medicine is non countable but we can use it. Exception to the rule. Some can also be used in questions if you are offering something to someone or asking for something by thinking that the answer is yes or hopes for such an answer. Do you understand that? ¿Cuándo se puede ocupar en preguntas? ¿Si ¿Sí se entiende esa parte? No sé si... Si no se entiende, me pueden decir. It's important for you to understand first and then use it. Some can also be used in questions if you are offering something. Lo podemos ofrecer, bueno, lo podemos usar en preguntas si ofrecemos algo. O alguien está pidiendo algo, creyendo que la respuesta va a ser sí. O que espera que esa sea la respuesta. Igual que en español, ¿verdad? Eh, no es correcto decir. Es como preguntas cerradas, entonces. Um, de hecho, se puede hacer en cualquier tipo de preguntas. Sin embargo, um, lo más común es una, una cerrada. Por, es, por ejemplo, esta que está acá. Would you like some coffee? So, there is like an offering, yes. right? Y usted espera que le digan que sí. Igual yes, que I en like. español. Yes, en español. I would. Yes, I would. Very good. So, in these kind of questions, yes, we can use some. Okay? 
Do you have any questions? There is a mistake there. Hay un error. Ahí está. Ahí anda. Uh, do you have any question about some? No question. Um, oh, sure. Uh, go ahead. Uh, and you said some um, and account, not accountable. You can use for countable and non countable. Oh. For both. Okay. Two? Um, no. Yeah, for both. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Any other question with uh, some? Okay, if we don't have question, we're going to go with any. Any is generally used in negative sentences. For example, there aren't any students in the school. I don't want to drink any fruit juice. Okay, negative sentences. Also, any is used in questions. Do we have any bread in the house? He hasn't received any emails yet. Okay. So, there is an exception to the rule. Any can only be used in positive sentences if it is used with conjunctions such as if and whether. Esta es un poquito más avanzada. No es de lo que estamos viendo, pero es importante conocerlo. El if, ¿sabe ustedes qué es if? Sí. Exacto. Condicional. Es un condicional, ¿verdad? Estos condicionales eh, se vienen dando, estas son cláusulas. Una cláusula es cuando tengo dos oraciones juntas. En este caso, la condicional, que quiere decir de que si se, si se cumple esta condición, va a pasar esta otra cosa. Puede ser cualquier cosa. Como cuando decimos, si estudio para el examen, pues voy a pasar. ¿verdad? Entonces, va a pasar si estudio. Es una condición. Lo mismo pasa en el inglés. Y whether es también como if. Eso no lo vamos a ver todavía, pero es bastante parecido como el sí. Si pasa esto, la consecuencia es esta otra. Entonces, el ejemplo dice, We'll always help you if you have any problems or troubles. ¿Se dan cuenta ahí si se puede ocupar any. Siempre te vamos a ayudar si tienes algún, ese algún ya sería como el any. We'll always help you if you have any problems or troubles. Okay, do you have questions about this one? Preguntas, dudas? Hable ahora o calle para siempre. No questions. Claro como la horchata decimos siempre. Ok. So. There is a little bit of other grammar. Uh, esto es como un repaso que sí está por ahí, pero no es, no es tanto. Entonces, there is y there are. We use there is, there are to say that somebody or something exists, for example. We use there is. Uh, son como varios ejemplos, ¿verdad? We use there is plus a singular noun. Example, there is a book. We use there are for plural nouns. Example, there are books. Si se fija, en la segunda ya no lleva a. Not possible. Cuando usamos plural, no podemos ponerle a. Esto es un, un error muy común. So please remember that one. Porque ahí sería como que estuviéramos diciendo, hay un libros. Porque hay en es uno una. Not possible. Please remember that one. Uh, we use, well, we use there is with a or an. Siempre que es there is, podríamos utilizar a or an. A no ser que sea un non-countable. There is an apple. That is possible. And then it says, we often use there are with some and any. Okay, entonces, some y any van, pueden ir con there are. Okay. And we use some and any with plural nouns, que es lo que estábamos viendo anteriormente, ¿verdad? 
any apples? Would you like any apples? Are there any water in the refrigerator? Okay. Well, there is, is there, actually. Uh, so, do you have any question about this? Eso es como un repaso. Yo creo que así ya lo habían visto, pero igual. Si hay preguntas, dudas, this is the time for questions. There is only a singular. If there are a plural. That is it. There is a singular and there are plural. And there okay. is also for uncountable. Okay. There is water. There is milk. Some and honey. Uh -huh. Very good. Okay. And. Okay. Ahora ya sabemos there is y there are como va. Hace poco vimos ayer de hecho el verbo to be, ¿verdad? En pasado. Entonces, ¿cómo sería, por ejemplo, esta? There is a book in past. There was, there were book. There was a book. No, there were. There was. There was a book. There was. Yeah. Remember that for is and am, we're going to Ah, yes. Pensé que era el de abajo, perdón. There and, was a book there. Very good, very good. So the other one, there are books. How is going to be that in the past? Simple you past. You see, there were, there were books. There were books. Very good. And the other one, there is an apple. How is going to be that in past? There, there was, was an, apple. an apple. There was an apple. Very good. Ahora, si la primera, there is a book, la quiero en negativo, en pasado, ¿cómo sería? There wasn't, there wasn't a book. There wasn't a book. En la siguiente, ¿cómo sería en pasado y en negativo? There weren't. There weren't books. Or books. There weren't books. There weren't books. There nice. weren't books. Yes. And, y la siguiente, ¿cómo sería en simple past? There wasn't. There wasn't, there wasn't an apple. apple. Ok. There allí, wasn't. allí. There wasn't any apple. Oh, and there wasn't any apple. Okay. There wasn't any apple. Okay, yes. Okay. A ver, la siguiente sería, ¿cómo sería la primera en pasado, pero en pregunta? Was there a book? Was there a book? Yes, it was. Was there a book? Oh, no, it was. Okay. La siguiente, ¿cómo sería en pasado y en pregunta? Were there books? Were there books? Very good. And who is going to be the uh, next one in past and in uh, question? Was there any was apple? There was there any, any apple? Any apple. Good. Very good. Nice. Questions. Esto es un repaso, pero venimos uniéndolo también con el pasado simple y con otras cosas que sí. hemos visto. Si se dan cuenta, viene todo unido. There is, there are some, any, there was, there were. Es como la matemática. ¿verdad? Nos enseñaban una cosa y el siguiente año nos enseñaban otra que decimos, pero si esto. Sí, es, es, es así. Very good. Ok, my friends. So we are going to practice let's see if i remember okay so just a few solo hay unas cuantas um hay perdida una palabra o una frase ahí what is the phrase or what is the word there's there's some some what do you say ¿Qué le falta a eso? Veamos todo el contexto. Ajá. Debes. No sé, no pienso que quepan esas que acabamos de ver, pero. There is a big notice board. Tendría que ser. There is, ¿Cómo sería entonces? There's a big. Ahí está. There is a big notice board 
on a classroom wall. Very good. There is a Go big ah. notice board. Yeah. There's a big notice uh, board on the classroom okay. wall. Si se dan cuenta, ahorita ya vamos haciendo como oraciones un poquito más largas, más complejas, ¿verdad? There is a big notice board. Oh, Do you know what is? Do you know what is a big notice board? Board, no. Sería como una it. pizarra, una gran pizarra de anuncios. En el salón. En la big board. notice board. En, la, board. en el salón de clases. Exacto, en la pared. Si se, da, si se dan cuenta, como dice pared, board. por eso dice on. Oh. On. Uh -huh. Todos esos detalles son muy importantes. Las preposiciones en inglés son muy importantes. O sea, si dijera solo classroom, ¿qué sería en vez de on? In, in, in the classroom. In the classroom. In the classroom. Uh -huh. Pero como ya dice wall, ya tengo que cambiarlo a on the classroom. That is important as well. Very good. Okay. So number two, how is it going to be number two? Mm, there aren't there any, any, any computers in the music room. Very good. There aren't any computers in the music room. Perfect. How is it going to be number three? Is there wardrobe in your bedroom. Is there a is there wardrobe? A wardrobe? A wardrobe. Or you can say, is there any wardrobe? wardrobe. Cualquiera de las dos le pegaría. Is there a wardrobe in your bedroom? Do you remember what a, ba a wardrobe is? ¿Y qué es eso? Ropero, no. No, teacher. That is no. Un guardarropas, un ropero. No, okay. Wardrobe. Okay. Very good. Okay, number four. Are there any students in the science lab? Are there any students in the science lab? Science lab. Very good. So that is it. Are there any students in the science lab? What could be an answer for that one? Go for there, there, there are. are. Yeah. Yes, there are. Many. There are. there are many. Yes, there are a few. Yes, there are six students. Todas esas son válidas, ¿verdad? dependiendo de, de cuál sea mm -hmm. la realidad. Okay, number five. There are many there are some magazines on the table. On the table. Puede ser oh, bueno. Lo que hemos visto es some, pero la verdad es que también puede ser many. There are many magazines on the table. There are some magazines on the table. Incluso puede ser un número. There are six magazines on the table. Right? Depends okay. on the topics. What is a magazine? Revista. 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 Nice. Very good. So, number six. Is there a swimming pool is at the school? Good. Is there yes, a there sea is. swimming pool at your school? And yes? Yes, there is. There yes, there is. Very good. Nice. Is Number there? Is there a swim? Is there? Is there okay. a swimming pool? Mm -hmm. okay. Very good. Uh, Number seven. How is it going to be? Are there, there are any books? any books on the decks? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, it's affirmative. ¿Cómo sería? Could you please repeat? Uh -huh. There aren't any books on the desk. There aren't. Uh -huh. Esa es negativa porque lleva any, ¿verdad? There aren't uh -huh. any books on the desk. So, ahí con el any, a no ser que lleve el if, ¿verdad? Que le estemos condicionando y diciéndole, si sí, algo te pasa, cualquier cosa sucede o cualquier persona viene. Si lleve el if o el whether, usted sabe que sí puede ser afirmativa. De lo contrario, any va a ser pregunta o negativa. So, that's why you need okay. to remember a little bit of the rules. Okay, uh, and number eight. How is going to be number eight? There is a sport center near my house. There is Very, center, ¿verdad? Yeah. There is a sport center near my house. Very good. Okay, near, what is near? Near, 
Cerca. Cerca. Very good. Cerca. Nice, nice. Perfect. Um, is there any question with this the practice exercises and grammar? No questions. Okay. So let's move on. Ah, esta es interesante. Okay, prepositions of place. Como les comentaba antes, las preposiciones son muy importantes en inglés. Mucho, 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 mucho. mucho. Entonces yo les aconsejo que se aprendan de poco a poco. Son muchas preposiciones. Uh, y muchas de estas preposiciones son importantes no solo porque denotan exactamente el lugar o la situación, porque ahí se pueden utilizar de diferentes maneras, no solo para el lugar, sino que también más adelante eh, lo vamos a utilizar para usarlo junto con los verbos. Entonces, that is important. Very, very important. Entonces, vamos a ver acá algunas prepositions. Eh, yo creo que está bastante claro eh, en cuanto a la imagen, pero igual la vamos a analizar. Above. And there is an example. The apple is above the box. Do you understand above? It's about the position, right? Oh, above. No está sobre. Sobre, sí. pero no encima, ¿verdad? Exacto. Arriba sobre. de. Arriba, ¿ok? Arriba. Casi siempre, casi siempre este above va a ser... Eh, como una superficie plana, está sobre. Por ejemplo, si yo le digo, léame lo que está sobre las letras rojas, ahí voy a usar above. Could you please read what is above okay. the red letters? That is it, ¿ok? Porque no está sobre, sino que está above. ¿Ok? Arriba. The opposite of above is going to be below. Abajo. The apple is below the box. No abajo. Exa exactamente abajo, abajo, sino que está en no. posición, ¿verdad? Está más abajito, es, usted va moviendo y lo encuentra. That is below. Entonces yo creo que por eso, por eso me gustó este gráfico, porque se ve exactamente, de acuerdo a la imagen, como exactamente. Aunque vive enfrente, la miramos dicho. Sí, por eso vamos a ir analizando poco a poco, ¿verdad? Pero eso sí es below. ¿Ok? La de a la par dice on. Teacher, Ajá, go ahead. Below, entonces es uh, uh, abajo, abajito, ¿cómo? Sí, abajo. Lo que pasa okay. es que hay muchas palabras que en español como que... Nosotros solo decimos abajo, arriba, ¿verdad? Yes, yes. Entonces, aquí en inglés, es abajo o es, es sobre, o es... Ya vamos a ver, por ejemplo, otra que es under, que esa es debajo exactamente. Debajo. Uh -huh. No es lo mismo below que under. Ok. Entonces, en inglés, yes. por eso son muy importantes las prepositions. Ok. So, the next one says on or on top of. Lo mismo. Es lo mismo. Entonces, sí se ocupa mucho el on, es lo más común. Pero puede ser de que de repente escuchen que, dice, que digan, the of. apple is on the top of the box. Ok. Esa sí está sobre. Está sobre. tocando la caja. ¿Verdad? Está sobre la caja. Yo creo que aquí ya se entiende un poco la diferencia entre above y on top. Very good. Vamos viendo aquí abajo. Tenemos under o under. Debajo. Ah, si ustedes ven la imagen, esa sí está debajo de. Exactamente. So, the apple is under the box. So, underneath, sí, no, no sabía que decía también debajo. También es lo mismo. Okay. Under. Ajá. Yeah. Entonces, y también aquí vemos la diferencia entre under y underneath con below. Mm -hmm. Not the same. In front of. No es lo mismo, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. Por eso es importante, porque a un gringuito, si usted le dice, mire, está encima de tal cosa o arriba de tal cosa, le tiene que saber decir exactamente para que lo encuentre. Si no, no lo va a encontrar. <risa> Okay, the other one is very easy. In front of. The apple is in front of the box. Eso sí es cabal enfrente. Good. Y el opuesto, the opposite of this one is behind. The apple 
is behind the box. Okay? Very good. Do you have any question hasta ahorita? Is there no question, plan? teacher. <laughs> All uh, right. Teacher, Go in ahead. the platform, eh, este dice in back to, mm -hmm. que es similar al behind, ¿no? Pero, ¿cómo saber cuándo usar uno y otro? ¿Cuál es el que vean en la plataforma, dice? Eh, dice in back to. In back to. Entiende que es como detrás atrás de... O sea, no sé. Quizá más que todo ese uh, on the back or on the on the front is going to be when you are like in a room. Cuando estamos en un cuarto, en un pasillo o algo por el estilo, entonces dice hasta allá atrás. Allí es donde va a usar el que está en la plataforma, at the back. Behind es son simplemente una posición detrás de algo. Si usted dice, Carla está detrás de María, entonces quiere decir que está acá, va atrás. Pero, at the, uh, to the back, quiere decir que está hasta allá al fondo. ¿Sí? ¿Se sí. entiende? Sí, sí, sí. Ok. Yeah. Bueno, tenemos un, un par más. Between. Entre, entre the apple is between the boxes. Sí, verdad. Este es entre, entre dos. Eso es bien importante, mm -hmm. dos. Entre este y este. Porque hay otro. Ah, bueno, aquí está el otro. Ya se lo voy a explicar. All right. Luego tenemos in or inside. Dentro. The apple is inside the box. Ese está exacto. Mm -hmm. Adentro, verdad. Good. The other one is next to or beside. Lo mismo. Al lado. Eh, se ocupa quizás next to más, más comúnmente. Uh, mm -hmm. Pero sí se puede usar beside or besides. Uh, the apple is next to the box. Very easy. Ok. También cuando están diciendo y quieren ser específicos a cuál lado, pueden decir, the apple is next to the box on the right. On the left. Or on the left. Uh -huh. Good. Luego tenemos near or close to. So, these are very similar. Ya me dijeron que near era cerca y los dos significan cerca. So, the apple is near the box or close to the box. Se puede usar cualquiera de los dos. Y ese lo que significa es que está cerca, pero no hay una posición específica. No está delante, detrás, está cerca nada más. Opposite is also very common. The apple is opposite to the box. Esto se ocupa mucho cuando estamos dando direcciones, por ejemplo. Cuando decimos, the drugstore is opposite to the bank. Quiere decir que está en uno en una esquina y el otro en la otra esquina. Están opuestos. Opposite. Y este es el otro que les decía, among o amongst. Probablemente el primero among es el más común. The apple is among the boxes. Esa está entre las cajas, pero si ustedes se dan cuenta, está rodeado de cajas. El de arriba, between, está entre dos nada más, entre este y este otro. En cambio, cuando decimos among, eh, hay varios alrededor y en And... medio está ese. Ese objeto que nosotros estamos diciendo, ¿ok? Ok. Very good. Estas son algunas de las preposiciones. Um, hay muchas más, pero vamos a ir poco a poco, lentamente. So, any question before we finish? No question, teacher. Very good, my friends. Ahora hemos avanzado bastante. Las primeras eran como repaso, pero unimos muchas cosas. Este sí lo vamos a utilizar ya para la clase de mañana. Um, y pues, um, my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you. Thank you uh, for joining the class today. Tomorrow we're going to check and review uh, the midterm test. If you haven't done that one, please do it. También recuerden de que eh, ya me imaginaría que a todos les mandaron los, la solicitud para enviar los documentos para el siguiente curso que eh, tenemos hasta el 10 de febrero para enviarlos, pero yo les recomiendo que lo envíen lo antes posible para guardar su cupo, ¿ok? Ok, teacher. Ok, Thank my friend. You. It was a pleasure. Have a wonderful night and see you tomorrow. Good night, teacher. Good night, Good night everyone. Good night. Good night, goodbye.